Greetings and salutations. How you doing? Thanks for hanging out with me for a while. In this video, I'm just going to update you on my experiences with Ubuntu 1910 thus far. And I want to talk a bit about some updates I've made to BU, which is a bash script, a little program that creates backups. And those of you who are new to the channel, maybe you just subscribed, you probably don't even know anything about that at all unless you've gone to the Easy Linux page. I have several little bash based scripts that you can download and install on your machine and play with and do with as you will. So we're going to take a look at that and talk about the new feature that has been added to BU. But first, I want to say a big congratulations to Martin Wimpress. Wimpy is a friend of the channel. He is also the co-founder of Ubuntu Mate, which is one of my favorite Linux distributions ever, and we've covered that quite a bit. He is now going to be the new head of development for the canonical desktop team. These are the people that put together Ubuntu. Will Cook has been in that job for the last five years and he's done a great job. But Will wants to move on to new things and he's going on to new opportunities. And Martin is stepping up to do that job. He has been working for Canonical doing other things for quite some time. And he's been a great spokesman for Canonical as well. I cannot think of a person better suited for that job on the planet because one of the things I love about Wimpy is that he really thinks like a regular user and he tries to apply that in his development on Ubuntu Mate and he's also been contributing to the vanilla GNOME Ubuntu desktop in that way, but now he's just going to be leading the team. So cannot wait to see what happens with Ubuntu 2004 LTS. And some people are saying, well, he's going to mess it up. And if he messes it up, <laughs> he's got five years to look at his mistake and all that stuff. They've already got all that planned out. They're ready to rock and roll with that. That's not going to be an issue. I'm sure it's going to be great. So congratulations, Wimpy. Good luck on your new thing. We're going to be watching and cheering you on here from this part of the world. Now, I have been running Ubuntu 1910 for the last two weeks since it went into beta. I've been playing around with it and I've had it installed on my main production system since then. I am doing this video on that machine that is running Ubuntu 1910 and everything has been really smooth. I have run into maybe one or two little glitches since I posted the video about Ubuntu. So you'll know in that video, if you watched it, that I talked about there's a slight issue with the sound where what happens is you get pops and clicks and there's a way to, ch to fix that. You just tell the system not to try and put your sound card to sleep. They've activated a power saving feature in the GNOME desktop that does this. And on some machines, it causes pops and clicks and other weird artifacts. So if you're having that issue, go check out that video and just look in the description, and I have that up there. Other than that, everything has gone pretty good up until I decided that I would give ZFS a shot as my file system. Now, ZFS is a very advanced new type file system, and for those of you who are don't quite understand what a file system is in the sense that we're talking about it here it is how the data is actually stored on your hard drive we're talking very low level the default for Ubuntu is ext4 ext4 has been around for a long time it is very stable you can shut your machine down do with an ungraceful shutdown you can have crashes and ext4 is pretty good at recovering the idea behind ZFS is that it's more robust even than EXT4 is, plus it adds what's called a volume manager, which means that you can have more than one drive in your system and you can have them set up in different kinds of RAID arrays if you want to, or you can just span the storage across all the disks in your system. It's amazing what you can actually do with ZFS. And it has been on Unix and you know, BSD Unix for quite some time, but it's just now getting to a point where on Ubuntu, at least, we're getting an automatic way to install it before you would have to go configure it yourself. Now, with all the cool features in ZFS, I thought, well, 
I'm going to go ahead and run it, even though they say it's experimental. And so I went ahead and installed it. Now, on the screen here, we have the installer. You see where it says experimental. So if we check that box right there, and we say this is what we want to do, what the installer does is it um, will erase the uh, hard drive completely. And I think my virtual machine has crashed because I keep clicking on the box and it won't take it. But anyway, that, beside the point, it's just here for a graphic anyway. Uh, it will erase the disk and then what it will do is create a ZFS system. We, you'll have a Z pools. One is called B pool and the other one is R pool. B is for boot and uh, the R pool is for the root pool. It's the entire file system and all that other kind of stuff. And then once you boot this thing up and it's set up, you can play around with doing things like taking snapshots, which is one of the big things about ZFS. In ZFS, you can actually tell the system, I want you to remember the state that you're in right now. And you do that at the file system level. We're not talking about having to run software like maybe you're familiar with Time Shift or like System Restore on Windows, something like that, where it it takes a it, it attempts to save the state of everything and basically it copies it over. So if you ever need it back, that just restores it. No, it doesn't even work that way. It just says, remember the way this is right now. And from that point forward, any change you make to the system is just added on to that. And if you do another snapshot, it just keeps going. So when you go to roll back, it's instantaneous. It's not even a matter of waiting for anything to crunch. It just does it. It's like, oh, you'd want to ignore all of this data that was placed on this file system after this date. No big deal. Bang, bang. We just roll back to it. So I wanted to play around with all that and get kind of learn my way around the system. Right now, ZFS on Linux is very much a command line driven thing with a bunch of commands and you have to know all the arguments and all that stuff. It's a bit cryptic to tell you the truth if you're not really familiar with it, which I am not, so I'm learning. So what did I do? Even though they say this is experimental here in full size, you know, caps, <laughs> it's experimental. I decided, well, I'm going to blow out the ext4 installation on my main system and I'm gonna put ZFS on it and I'm gonna start playing around with this so I actually did it I installed it and it went well once I got it installed I ran my updates that went well rebooted after the updates and then decided to go ahead and start putting my data back on the system because I had to back everything up first because I'm reformatting the main drive in the system and I had to put all the data back on it, my own personal data. So that took quite some time to copy all that back in. That went well. And after I did that, I set up all the software that I had to reinstall because it I basically start over and I did that. And I put all my settings in and it was great. And I got to the point where now I could actually start using the system and seeing whether ZFS was faster than EXT4 and seeing if I could create snapshots and play around with it. And I rebooted the system and it came back up, but then for some reason or another, ZFS forgot all of the changes I had made to the system. Everything was gone. It was like it looked the way it looked after I had fresh booted it right after I installed it. So it, it blew out all the data that I had copied over, all the programs that I had installed, all the changes I had made to that pro those programs. So I gave up and I had to re install the system and when I reinstalled I came back up and then I came across a little boot bug that seems to be something that came along with an update a little bit later on and that is that about every third time the system boots you get these very weird artifacts on your screen and I have no idea where this is coming from I have been able to reproduce it in a virtual machine at first I thought it was my video card going bad like the card itself was going bad and then uh, I realized, no, I think this is software based. So I thought maybe it was something to do with the drivers. But what it does is those of you who have loaded Ubuntu on slower drives may have seen that you'll get this Ubuntu logo. And under that, you'll have those little dots that go across the screen that let you know something's happening. It's like that gets hung up. 
and the system tries to display that even over top of the desktop itself once you get it loaded and then when you shut down it jumps back to that but it's all gornied up it's not right and uh, I don't know what that is and if I ever figure it out I'll actually report the bug if you're seeing that please put a comment in here because I it might be something that I'm only seeing on this particular machine it might be hardware specific I don't know other than that um, I it, Ubuntu 1910 is very well done and the little incremental updates to all of the software packages that are installed make it for me worth sticking to as opposed to being on Ubuntu 1804 LTS. Now all the other machines in the house are on Ubuntu 1804 and they will stay there because everybody's happy with it. Uh, if you're a nerd and you want the latest greatest 1910 seems to be the way to go so it's it's been pretty awesome and uh, I'm enjoying it definitely they did a wonderful job with it now we'll see about this boot thing I might get an update and it might fix itself I don't know but I reinstalled the system like three times trying to chase it down I thought this was something that I was doing wrong but it seems to be part of the system and it could be gone by the time you see this video they could send an update that would fix it so I don't have a clue as for ZFS a lot more work needs to be done with ZFS uh, to make it friendly to uh, what I call stupid user friendly. And I say that in a loving way. I'm just talking about somebody who doesn't really understand opening up a terminal and doesn't want to learn a bunch of commands to make this thing work. They do have a piece of software called ZFS. No, no, no. No, it's called ZSYS. Excuse me. Z-S-Y-S that they are working on. This is a canonical project that will give you a simple interface to be able to create snapshots every time the system gets updated and give you a place to be able to roll back at boot time. In other words, when you go to boot the system, not only will you be able to change kernels as what we're used to now, but you'll have some sort of facility where you can go back in time as well. That's going to be integrated in. They're working on that and I'm going to be watching the development of that very closely. So it's not there yet, um, unless you are very well versed with ZFS, I would not really recommend that you do that. And I would kind of like to know, I never could figure out why it dumped me. It was like it dumped all the data that I had put on the system like it wasn't there. It's like it rolled back to a snapshot, which I didn't create, and I never told it to roll back to. I never got to that point. I was just trying to get things installed. So I'm not going to mess with it. I'm going to let others do that who are smarter than me because there are quite a few of you out there. So that is my impressions of Ubuntu. Now, let us move on to the second part of the video, the stuff that I want to talk about. I want to talk about bash scripts. Some of you guys don't even know I do this, and that's because I haven't really mentioned it on the channel in quite some time. But I make available for you to play with little programs written in bash they are simple scripts and you can come to the easy linux page here click on bash scripts there's a little explanation warning you that i you know if you these are as is babe i'm not going to really guarantee that they work or nothing like that uh, these are tools that i have come up with that i use on a daily basis and the ones that i have a bunch of scripts but the ones that i think other people can actually get use out of are the ones that i'm sharing here i have some other scripts that uh, are just too personalized to share with the general public i'm trying to work on a way to share those for those of you who are interested in doing that i've mentioned them in past videos maybe i'll just put them up here on the page where it's like hey if you want to get a copy of this you can click on it and download it because there's they're really tiny I can just put them up here and you can just click on it and get it. But some people don't want to download from my personal page. And even though I can assure you that it's very secure, I don't blame you for that. So the stuff that I do share is up on GitHub. And GitHub is uh, repositories for people like me that create these little things and want to share them. So I have them up here and you can link to GitHub from here. And if you download directly from this page what happens is is that it um, downloads from github directly so it's not hosted locally or anything like that 
So the one that got the update was BU, which is back up. Uh, this replaced an earlier program that I had written a couple of years ago with the help of um, Jeremy O'Connell and um, some other folks who contributed, and it was called XBT. And it was a really gargantuan program for a bash script in and of itself at one point i had it set up well it is now set up you can go on github and look at it if you want to it's actually in a deb file so you can download a deb file and then use gdebbie to install it on your debian based system and i got to a place with it where it was getting big and some people were requesting changes and i was like i really can't change this anymore so i decided to do something different and that's called bu which is a backup tool and what it does is it creates snapshot style backups onto an external drive of your entire home directory on your Linux system. And not only that, you can do it with more than one computer. So if you have three or four Linux systems in your house, and let's say you've got a great big external USB drive with several terabytes of space on it, create a partition on that drive and label it bu underscore backups that's all you got to do and the uh, name of the drive or rather all you have to do is call it bu underscore drive and it will automatically create the bu backups directory and that's all it looks for so you plug that usb into your system and when you run the program it looks for a partition that is mounted where removable media is mounted in Debian and Ubuntu and Linux Mint and anything else based on Ubuntu and if it sees that it says ah my meat what I'm gonna do here now is back up everything on this machine to that particular partition and it creates its own directories uh, so you can keep them all nicely separated and you can do this like I said on as many Linux systems as you like as long as there's room on the BU drive partition for all of the data that's on all of the machines. One of the things that we didn't bring over from XBT was the log function. The log function on XBT uh, created a log and it put it in the uh, directory where the stuff was saved for the system and it kept growing and it was kind of gargantuan and the code to actually make it work was a little bit weird so I just went ahead and dumped that because I didn't think anybody was looking at it however it has come to my attention that some folks would like to have some indication of the last time that BU was run because BU when you run it it creates a mirrored image of your home directory and your ETC directory and puts it on this backup drive that's how it works it does not create rolling backups where you have four or five different dated backups that roll back. No, it just takes a snapshot. It keeps it very, very simple. So it's kind of good to know when the last one was done. So what I ended up doing was I created a, a, just a couple of lines of code in the script that now create a flag file and they stick it in the directory so on this machine right here we're in the BU backups there's BU drive right here and we go forward so we go from um, BU backups and then the only machine I've backed up on it is this main machine big boy it's the name of the machine and then you have your ETC directory and your home directory and then you have this file here that tells you that it was successfully backed up or a little bit earlier today as of the day I'm recording that's all that does when you <clears throat> excuse me when you run the program again it will delete this file and create a new one it's just a flag file there's nothing in it it's just a empty file you're just using the name of the file so that way when you're looking at backing up or something like that um, you'll know the last time it was run it's super simple and it's not creating a file that will grow and get bigger that you'll have to delete or you don't have to scroll through information we don't have to have a reader built into the program to make it work and that's why I did it that way so if you come back here to this page and if you are new to this and you're going I've never heard of this before it's really cool I want to check it out you can come to easylinux.com and we'll have a link in the 
description here and then you can download it from here and there's a video here where you can learn everything that you could possibly ever need to know about this little piece of software this video is an hour long but if you just want to install it and play with it I explain the basics in the first 10 or 15 minutes and after that it's all theory of operations and stuff like that so don't let that scare you you don't have to watch the entire video to start using it other software that I have available just real quickly here let's talk about it we've got CYA CYA is a program that was actually written by Jeremy O'Connell and Jeremy O'Connell is the in-house engineer here at Easy Linux. He's the one who designed the web page and he's the one who keeps the servers up and running and makes everything work and he donates his time to us which is really cool. And a couple of years ago I got to work on this project. Uh, CYA is uh, another type of backup program but it doesn't really back up. What it does is it create snapshots that you can roll your system back to sort of like system restore in Windows uh, we have a program that's become very popular in Linux these days called Timeshift I use Timeshift myself but CYA is more terminal based it's great for servers and it's great for anybody who wants to have really fine tooth control over how that works maybe for some reason you don't like Timeshift and you don't want to use it that's fine you can check out CYA CYA is an awesome program and it was developed by Jeremy O'Connell and I have it here because uh, I kind of contributed to it in that I did a lot of the beta testing and consulted a little bit on it but I didn't write the code he did that so also we have here a program called up now this is a silly little program that I use daily and it is nothing more than an automated updater for Linux systems that are Debian based. That's it. So if it's Debian, Ubuntu, MX Linux, this works. And there are several options that you can choose when at the command line. And you can check that out as well. There's no video on this one. Oh, there is a video up on this one. Uh, up has gotten some new features since that video. So make sure that you read the uh, README when you download it so you know what's been added. Show is a crazy little piece of software that is designed only to display text files on a terminal. That's it. And I developed it because I needed a way to do that in a terminal while I was making videos. So it just that's all it does you just feed it file names and then it cre it shows them on the screen without a cursor and without any sort of um, formatting around it it just shows it so if you have ever have need for doing something like that making presentations with a terminal you can check that out as well uh, pre shrink VM is actually just a little piece of software that uh, is for virtual box it's kind of if you're not running virtual box you probably won't need it but what it does is it prepares a virtual drive for shrinking if you want to compact the drive so those who run virtual box and do that will understand what that's for here's one that uh, is relatively recent it's called p2v p2v is picture to video basically what it does is it lets you take an image file uh, a jpeg or a png and then you can take an audio file and you can put those together and come up with a video where the video portion is nothing but the picture and the audio file uh, is in FLAC format and it uh, makes an MKV video that's the output and you can upload that on YouTube or you can put it in um, something like Handbrake to turn it into something else but that is a piece of software that I find handy uh, when I want to post things that are basically audio with a picture I mean they don't need if you're doing podcasts or something like that it might be interesting just remember that I have it set up to uh, it uses flack audio as the output and uh, I think the video is uh, h264 doesn't make huge files it makes pretty decently small files even for long things so uh, when you upload it to YouTube, since it's using FLAC, it doesn't have any um, loss from data compression before it hits YouTube. 
And then finally, I have this Easy Linux Bash Script collection. This is something that I worked on a long time ago, where what it is is um, uh, it's basically a bunch of uh, scripts that uh, I was playing with at that time, and early versions of XBT, an early version of UP, and other things like that. And um, then we have uh, XBT listed here. So, um, XBT is at this point uh, not being developed. It is being, uh, it's just in archive mode. That's all it is. So those of you who are currently using XBT, it should continue to work just fine. I don't see any reason why it shouldn't uh, for coming versions of Ubuntu and Debian-based systems. But I'm not maintaining it anymore. So you might want to look at changing over to BU. And then finally, we have um, Bash Scripts, Tweaks, and Tricks here. So there's a bunch of crap up on here, <laughs> actually. Are there any more programs worth talking about? No, that's basically it. So you can check this out for yourself. And that is basically that. So other than that, I uh, just want to say thank you to everybody who has subscribed to the channel and everybody who continues to put up positive comments. Um, the video production mode around here is probably going to slow down a little bit as it usually does this time of year as we approach the holidays but as new things happen I will certainly be posting more videos about them your feedback is always welcome be sure and check out easylinux.com to take a look at those bash scripts if you want to also don't forget in the description to this video I will have a direct link to the easy linux github page also check out easy linux on facebook if you are a facebook user and give it a like if you would please and if you really want to have some fun you can check out our forum which is called easy talk and this is unique in that we run it in other words it's not something that is being provided to us by some big company we have configured the software we own the server Everything from the server OS on down is something we control, and it's a really tight-knit little community there with some really nice moderators, and so therefore, uh, we really just don't tolerate a lot of nastiness going on, so if you want to check that out, do that. That link is in the description for this video as well. I hope you all have a wonderful fall season if you are in the northern hemisphere and if you are our friends that live in the southern hemisphere you guys are looking forward to spring aren't you 